Hello students, uh, good morning. So in the previous class we discussed uh, Gauss law and some simple problems based on the Gauss law we are discussing. So some more examples are uh, there in that. So we will discuss, we will continue those examples, some simple problems based on the Gauss law. And later we will go to the uh, next applications of this uh, Gauss law. I think in the last class uh, by mistake uh, some problem was uh, not completed, uh, completely recorded. And so now I will continue that problem. So that is, uh, so actually we discussed a problem like when the charge is placed at the center, exactly at the center of a hemispherical sphere, we discussed that already. So the total flux passing through that will be equal to, if a charge Q is placed here, then Q by 2 epsilon naught we can write, right? This is the total flux or I can say net flux. And in the same case, I can also write this, uh, flux passing through this curved surface will be equal to, this will be Q by 2 epsilon naught only will get. Because the flux passing through this plane surface uh, will be zero. Because their electric field direction will be like this and area vector will be like this. And so they are perpendicular to each other. And so that flux will be zero. Only that whatever the total flux it is there, that will be passing through the hemispherical surface only. This example we already discussed in the last class, right? And so now here, uh, I am explaining about the case. This is a hemispherical surface. Now a charge Q is just placed outside. Say at a distance of, say we representing with the delta. And here actually this delta is uh, very small. very small in the sense you can consider that this delta tends to zero. It's almost zero. That means simply here even though I am representing by this distance actually it is not by the distance. So to represent to understand that it is outside that uh, it is not at the center I am drawing I am representing this charge here. So it is very close to the center but it is not at the center. It is just outside that hemisphere we can say just outside the hemisphere. So that is a uh, what I mean to say here delta is uh, zero means. Now in this case we need to answer about what is the total flux passing through that and what is the total flux passing through the hemisphere and what is the flux passing through the plane surface. We need to answer that. That means we need to find total flux and the second one is flux through curved surface. flux through the curved surface and the third one we need to find is flux through the plane surface. So we need to answer about these three questions here. That means again I am saying that the difference between that previous problem and this problem I am going to explain here. In this previous problem we are considering that the charge is placed exactly at the center, right? Now here it is, it is placed just away from the center but not at the center. So that I am representing it by a delta, uh, distance, delta is nothing but distance. It is placed at a distance of delta from the center and the delta is very small tending to zero. So now in this case we need to answer the total flux, flux through the curved surface and flux through the plane surface. So now first I am explaining the flux through the uh, plane, uh, total flux. And so now I am writing this total flux here. So in this case, can you say what is the charge enclosed? Charge enclosed by our surface is, now it's the surface itself, let us take it as a Gaussian surface. Now what is the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface? Zero, right? Because charge is outside the sphere, outside this hemisphere and so that no charge is present inside that. And so charge enclosed is zero. And so from that we can write this, uh, the net flux or the total flux we can write as 1 by epsilon naught times 0. So that means total flux is 0. And so from the previous examples we can write as the total flux is 0, this is our answer for this first question here. And so now as the total flux is 0, this total flux we can write as flux through the curved surface plus flux through the plane surface. This value is equal to 0, right? And so let it be equation 1. And now let us answer about the flux through the curved surface. And so in the previous 
example that means in this example when it is exactly placed at the center we calculated that flux through the curved surface as q by 2 epsilon naught and so now when the charge is placed exactly here that means just away from the center then also i can write that the flux passing through the curved surface is almost remains same almost q by 2 epsilon naught only because the distance what we are taking here is very small whether it is placing here or very close to that charge very close to the center almost the flux electric field at any point on this hemisphere almost remains same at any point on the curved surface of that hemisphere right and so flux through this curved surface can be taken as again q by 2 epsilon naught that is because this distance is very small got it if this distance is large for example here if this distance is r by 2 then you can't uh, take that approximation there the distance is very small that is already given in the data itself the charge is placed at very small distance from the center and so that we can approximately take it as flux to the curved surface is q by 2 epsilon naught we can consider here therefore i can write so flux through the curved surface is equal to q by 2 epsilon naught got it why we are taking q by 2 epsilon naught from this example we are taking that almost it remains same and so now here let us substitute this value in this case here in this equation that means we need to find now flux through the plane surface from equation 1 so we can write that uh, flux through the plane surface is equal to negative of flux through the curved surface we can write therefore flux through the plane surface will be equal to minus q by 2 epsilon naught we can write so this will be the flux through the plane surface and this is the flux through the plane curved surface and this is the flux through the net flux through the total hemisphere so now that is actually the difference is this one here here the flux of the plane surface in this example is zero because here i already explained here because the electric field at any point will electric field lines will be tangential to that surface area vector will be perpendicular to that and so that flux of the plane surface will be zero but here flux of the plane surface is not zero it is exactly equal to the flux of the surf, uh, flux of the curved surface but it is opposite sign because flux of the plane surface will enter the electric flux through the plane surface and it will come out of the semi uh, curved surface here actually by absorbing the diagram itself we can conclude that that means whatever the flux entering here if the lines of uh, this electric field lines are entering like this for example so whatever the lines now we can observe that these lines are not uh, parallel to the plane surface so that means now they are making certain angle now whatever the lines entering here those lines only will come out of this curved surface whatever the lines entering from this base here suppose our base is a circular plane like this so then whatever the lines entering through this curved surface that means plane surface those lines only will come out of this curved surface here so that's why their magnitudes are equal the only difference is through the plane surface if this charge is positive charge through the plane surface those lines will enter and so that that flux is negative and through the curved surface those lines will come out here so that is only the difference there so that is the flux through the plane surface and flux through the curved surface and net flux so here you can observe that net flux is zero here because no charge is enclosed here Next, let us see such a simple examples based on this uh, flux calculation. Next, I will take this uh, cube example. So, let us take this uh, cube of uh, side L. Now a charge is placed at the center. A charge point charge Q is placed at the center. So in this cube only different cases will be there. So first case I am taking that. Uh, the 
when charge is at center of the cube. We are taking all our point charges only. Center of the cube. So we need to write the total flux. So can you say total flux to the cube? Just again basing on our Gauss law. Our Gauss law is nothing but whatever the charge enclosure here, then total flux will be equal to 1 by epsilon naught times a charge enclosure. And so now here we can take it as charge enclosure is nothing but Q. So I can write it as Q by epsilon naught. That is the total flux here. Now here only sometimes I will ask what is the flux passing through the each phase. So flux through each phase of the cube. So flux through the each phase we can write as. Now simply you can observe that. Uh, we are placing the charge at the center of the cube here. When the charge is placed at the center of the cube, the whatever the flux it is coming from this uh, uh, charge here, that flux will be equally distributed among all the six phases. That means here six phases are there. So then you can write this total uh, flux through the each phase will be divided equally among all phases. That means it is divided uh, one sixth of this total flux here. The total flux, that means flux passing through each phase is nothing but. 1 by 6 of uh, net flux we can write and so which is flux through the each phase will be equal to q by 6 epsilon naught we can write so that will be the flux through the each phase right so flux through the each phase is nothing but q by 6 epsilon naught and so now here uh, that is a flux through the each phase and next here uh, um, in this, not only in this example, there are six phases so that we are writing that. Whenever such a uh, symmetrical diagram is there, regular diagram is there and we are placing the charge at the center. If suppose that uh, uh, the diagram or that object is having n sides, then we can write this as uh, flux through the each phase will be, we can write it as in general 1 by n times the net flux we can write. This is a general formula for example. If the body is a uh, regular object, and that means it is having some identical n identical sides and now the charge is placed at the center geometrical center of this object then we can uh, write that uh, flux passing through the each phase as 1 by n times the net so there you should observe that when this formula is applicable when only the body is symmetrical and we are placing the charge at the center right and next in the same example suppose if charge is placed at the any one phase So when point charge is placed at face center of the cube, when point charge is placed at face center, like suppose if you are taking this is one of the face here, we are placing it one face. Suppose I am placing here, a point charge Q is placed on this uh, center of this face. And so now, similar to our previous hemisphere problem, when the object is placed at the center of the hemisphere, then we consider that charge belongs to that hemisphere is only Q by 2, right? So here also the same concept, whenever the point charge is placed on the boundary of an object, boundary of a given surface then we need to take the charge belongs to that surface will be only half of the charge we need to take. Actually, we need to consider a symmetrical surface there, a symmetrical object so that it forms a complete object there. Now, for example, simply what I am saying is, if you are taking this object is uh, placed at the center of this face here, center of let us consider this is one side of such a cube. So, if you are placing at the center, that charge will belong to if you are combining this, these two, then it becomes an internal charge. So for this whole two objects, two identical cubes we need to consider here. When you are taking the two identical cubes, that charge will become an internal because this, this point charge will belongs to here. That means we are placing here. 
half of charge will belong to this cube and other half will belong to this cube here if you are taking them as two cubes and so that means we need to assume an additional cube there if you are taking additional another cube identical cube here then the cube the charge q will become the inside and so total flux passing through both the cubes will be equal to q by epsilon naught we can write and from this given cube it will be q by 2 epsilon naught we, we need to write and so then uh, total net flux through the cube we can write as q by 2 epsilon naught so that means that is a flux passing through this given uh, cube which is we already uh, written in case of uh, hemisphere whenever an object is that is not only for the cube or for hemisphere so whenever the object the point charge is placed on the boundary of a surface then uh, the charge charge belongs to that will be equal to that means uh, charge belongs to that part will be equal to q by 2 we can write now in this only instead of placing at the face center if suppose if it is placed at the corner so now let us see that one if the charge is placed at the corner suppose in this i am taking this charge is placed at this corner here so i am giving some names also here let us take this as a b c d e f g h right and so now in this we need to write the flux pass in through that uh, total flux so first to mention this case here when point charge is placed at any one corner of the cube so when point charge is placed at any one corner so suppose here in this example we are taking that it is placed at the uh, cube uh, means at the corner b so we need to write now total flux passing through that uh, cube so total flux through the cube so can you say how much it is so i think in chemistry in crystal structures you got such a cases there in crystal structure uh, uh, like face centered uh, body centered like there we will discuss actually such a type of here that means now here we need to identify how much fraction of the charge belongs to this cube so that will become charge enclosed so then based on that we can write uh, total flux associated with that cube or passing through that cube we can write here so when the corner when the charge is placed in the corner how much of that cube will belong to this that means simply you need to consider like if you are placing uh, like that so if you are we need to take how many identical cubes we need to take so that the charge becomes an internal inside completely inside like here i said in order to get the charge becomes completely inside we need to assume another identical cube so that the charge will be shared between the total flux will be shared between those two cubes here and so similarly here in order to uh, get the charge completely inside we need to take such a eight identical cubes like suppose simply i am taking this example here suppose this is uh, let us say charge is placed at this corner for example this i am assuming it as a cube it's not actually a cube i am assuming it as a cube so now this is topmost corner for example it is uh, lying at the topmost corner now see this so this like this we can place another additional cube so this becomes two cubes and so here i can place another cube here this corner i am taking the charge listen again this corner i am taking the charge so this is uh, that means two cubes now this is the third one that means these cubes are sharing that corner i am i am representing that all these cubes what i am placing here those cubes are sharing that corner and so i can place like this this is one two three like this in addition to this we are placing three like this on the top we can place here so again four like this we can place now this corner will be shared here and so above this we can place here and similarly like this above four also we can place here so that means here one here one and here one and here one we can place such a eight 
8 cubes. That charge will be shared by total 8 cubes. And so now total charge is now 1 by epsilon naught times. Now charge belongs to this cube will be Q by 8 we can write. And so that it will be Q by 8 epsilon naught. So imagine that if you are placing such a 8 cubes in corner, that means 8 cubes in contact, 8 such a identical cubes are placed in contact, 4 on the one plane and above that another 4. That means suppose on the floor, if you are placing the 4 uh, cubes in contact with each other and exactly above, uh, above them again place another 4. So total 8 cubes will be there. Now that midpoint of the total 8 cubes is nothing but our one of the corner here. So that corner is shared totally 8 cubes, between 8 cubes, so that it is cube by 8. Now this is a flux passing through this, uh, net flux passing through the total 8 cubes. Now actually in this problem, uh, sometimes they will also ask about what is the flux passing through the phases, different phases. Like suppose in that if I ask what is the flux passing through that phase uh, A, B, C, D. So let us take that uh, phase. I am asking that flux passing through this A, B, C, D. So now simply you can identify here. Simply we know that flux here electric field line. Suppose if I draw the electric field line on this plane at any point here or at any point on this plane A, B, C, D. If I represent the direction of electric field. So the direction of electric field is it will be parallel to that plane you will get. Suppose if I consider here, the right direction of electric field will be like this. If I consider a point here, the direction of electric field will be like this, on that plane. That means if you are taking the charges present at this corner, now the electric field at any point will be tangential. Here if you want to find, it will be tangential like this. It will be tangential like this. It will be tangential like this. So if the charge is at this corner, then electric field at any point on this plane will be parallel to that plane only will get. And so that electric field will be parallel to that plane. And so now if I represent the area vector, area vector will be perpendicular to that plane you will get. And so that flux passing through that phase will be then, that means E into A into cos 90. So that will be 0. Flux passing through that plane surface will be 0. Similarly, let us identify such a plane surfaces here. This plane, A, B, G, H. On this plane also, if I want to represent electric field, you can say like this. That means simply I can, you can identify that as, at that corner, three faces of the cube are uh, meeting with each other. They are intersecting with, with each other. Three corners of the, that means three faces. Three faces, that corner is common for the three faces. Now, flux passing through those three places will be zero only will get. Because one of such a phase is what we discussed now. A, B, C, D. This is one phase. Another phase is A, B, uh, sorry, A, B, G, H. That is another plane or another phase. That means on that phase also electric field will be parallel to that place only you will get. Because the charge is lying on that plane only you can consider. Right? And so now similarly the back surface. B, C, F, G. This is another plane here. So on this plane also you can consider that electric field will be, suppose if you are taking a point on that back side plane, the electric field will be lying in that plane only you will get. And so that the total uh, flux passing through those three phases will be zero. Is it clear what it, why it is zero? For example, if you are taking this board as one of such a plane, if suppose the charge is present here, if the charge is present for example here, if I ask the direction of electric field will be like this. So at any point on this plane will be parallel to the plane only will get, if the charge is lying on the plane itself. And so area vector will be perpendicular to that. If I ask the flux passing through this, plane surface will be zero. So that because of that reason flux passing through these phases A, B, C, D, A, B, G, H and back side B, C, F, G. That means the phases at which that corner is common for all the, those three phases. That means A, B, C, D is one phase and another phase is A, B, G, H. And another phase is B, C, F, G. For all those three phases, flux is zero. The reason is E bar is perpendicular to A bar. That is the reason why that flux is zero in means. And so now the flux passing through the remaining uh, phases. 
So if I ask what is the flux pass in through, for example, AH ED, the front face of this tube, the front face means this one. Similarly, this bottom CDEF and GH, that means EF, GH, these faces, remaining three faces. So you can observe that remaining three faces will be symmetrical about that, symmetrical about that uh, uh, charge. And so whatever the flux emitted, that means whatever the flux passing through that tube, that will be shared between these three faces equally because they are symmetrical. Suppose in this closed room, if you consider, charge is at one corner. Now, if suppose the charge is at this corner of this room, if you consider, then we are saying flux passing through this wall is zero, flux passing through that wall is zero, and flux passing through the top surface is also zero. In a, in a room, for example, if you are taking at the topmost corner of any one of the corner, if you consider, then flux passing through, for example, in this room, I am taking this wall and that wall and the top. Those three walls will be flux passing through, those three walls will be zero. And the remaining flux, whatever the flux coming out of this tube, that flux will be shared between this wall and that wall and the floor. And so then that is nothing but what we are writing here. And so then this is another phase is, so bottom uh, floor we can write that is C, D, E, F. And the next one is flux passing through E, F, G, H. Yeah, this will be equal to 1 by 3 times the total flux we can write. Because whatever the total flux is there, that flux will be shared between these phases. So this is, we can write this as 1 by 3 into Q by uh, 8 epsilon naught. So which will give us uh, Q by 24 epsilon naught. So that will be the flux passing through all these uh, three phases there. So like that we need to calculate the flux passing through each phase. So flux net flux is Q by 8 epsilon naught. Flux passing through those three corners will be, those three phases will be zero. And uh, the flux passing through the remaining three phases will be one third of the net flux we can write. So Q by 24 uh, epsilon naught we can write. So that is the flux passing through different phases there. And next year in this cube example only we can consider another thing like this. Suppose here uh, a line of charge lambda is given for us. Linear charge density lambda. Suppose it is uh, very long, the line of charge is uh, very long. This is a side of uh, say A. The cube side is A. Now we need to place that line of charge inside this cube, that means passing through the cube, so that maximum flux passing through that uh, cube. So that is we need to answer here. That means if you are arranging this line of uh, charge passing through this cube, then what is the maximum flux that can flow through the cube? So the maximum flux we need to answer. That means to uh, identify uh, what is the maximum flux, so first we need to decide how to place this line of charge. So in which way we need to place the line of charge so that maximum flux passing through the imaginary cube there. So right, how to place? For example, if I am placing directly normal to these faces here, suppose along this line if I am placing here, from this face to opposite face, then uh, the maximum length that can be inside this is A. And if I am placing, uh, that means to get the maximum, I think all of you can understand that easily. We should place this line of charge along body diagonal. So if you are placing along the body diagonal, that means starting from this corner to uh, passing through this corner here. If I am placing this line of charge like this, if line of charge is classed like this, then maximum charge will be enclosed here. Because maximum length of this uh, wire will be there inside this, or line of charge will be there inside this. And so that length you can write it as root 3a 
So you can write this as q maximum is equal to root 3a into lambda. That means maximum length will be root 3a, body diagonal length and into lambda. That gives us maximum charge. And so that the maximum flux will be equal to this maximum flux passing through the cube will be equal to q maximum by epsilon naught. So which is nothing but uh, this phi max is equal to root 3 lambda a by epsilon naught we can write. So this will be the maximum flux here. So just to mention that a line of charge a line of charge having linear charge density lambda is to be placed inside <coughs> inside a cube such that maximum flux pass through the cube. You may note them as some points or some examples such that maximum flux passing through the cube. And there we mentioned that to get the maximum flux it should be placed along the body diagonal. To get the maximum flux it should be placed along the body diagonal. Therefore you may write this maximum charge inside. This is a maximum charge inside the cube. So similarly, similar to this, there is another problem is there, like suppose we are placing uh, here totally 12 edges are there, 12 infinitely line of charges are there here. They are placed along the edge of, edges of this cube. Got it? Along the 12 edges, 12 infinitely line of charges are placed. All of them are having this linear charge density lambda. So write that, uh, write that as a problem. So 12 line of, 12 identical line of charges, 12 identical line of charges, each of linear density lambda, each of linear density lambda are placed along the edges of a cube, edges of a cube. Then find what is flux passing through the, what is the net flux passing through the cube? What is the net flux passing through the cube? So for this we need to write net charge enclosed by the cube. Can you say how much charge is enclosed by the cube? This is a cube of side L. This side of this cube is I am taking for example L. And note that one also. The side of the cube is L. So then can you say how much charge? And it's actually we are taking a cube along each side a line of charge is there. A line of charge is passing through along the each side of that cube. Right? And so then 
and they are asking that uh, and the, all they are having that uh, same linear charge density lambda now they are asking that what is the charge passing uh, what is the flux passing through that so now for that we need to calculate that what is the charge enclosed by that cube so then can you say what is the charge enclosed by the cube so that means if you are taking for example a line of charge of length l then we know lambda into l is the charge present on that line and so now for example if you are taking this line here this line for example i am taking here now this is our cube i am docking this one so i will mention this extended part as some dotted line here so that there is no any confusion for you so that means this is our cube here So that is our cube here. Right? And so now in that, for example, if I am taking this side, or for example, let us take this side, the charge So the charge present on that part will be equal to lambda into L. And so now that charge is not only belongs to this cube, right? So that charge is shared by total four cubes, right? Each edge if you are taking, another cube is placed in contact with it. Now this side, for example, if I consider here, this side is common for total four cube. Exactly beside this, we can place one cube. And exactly back side of then you will get front four uh, two cubes you will get exactly back side you can place another two cubes so total four cubes will uh, this means this side will be common for total four cubes right and so that I can write this charge belongs to this will be lambda L by four into such a how many sides are there twelve sides right got it each side that means if you are taking this edge here this edge is common for four cubes so that means whatever the charge lambda by four is there for on this edge that charge belongs to that four cubes so now charge belongs to our cube one part will be equal to lambda by four so lambda by four into such a 12 parts are there that means for example if you are taking one two three four that is vertical four and here 4 will be there horizontal and here horizontal 4 will be there. So total 12. And so this uh, charge enclosed will be equal to, I can write this as 3 lambda L. And therefore from this we can write the net flux. 1 by epsilon naught times the charge enclosed or charge inside this Gaussian surface. Therefore I can write this as 3 lambda L by epsilon naught we can write. Got it? So just you need to identify here how much charge belongs to that cube. And next similar to this uh, and based on the cube only we can write uh, just we will ask sometimes a graph here let us see this problem. Suppose I am taking this a cube of side uh, A. Now here this is a line of charge I am taking here. This is a line of charge having this linear charge density lambda. And so now it is moving with the velocity V. Right? Now here the question is, this line of charge, this imaginary cube we are taking here. This is an imaginary cube of side A we are taking. And this is a line of charge having this uh, length L. 
Now this line of charge is moving with the constant velocity. That means it is uh, ready to start at t is equal to zero. It is starting. Uh, it starts entering this cube here. Then we need to draw the variation of the flux with the time. Variation of the flux passing through the time. So just to mention that question, write it as that uh, question there. Through an imaginary cube of side A. Through an imaginary side, uh, sorry, through an imaginary cube of side A, a line of charge of length L, a line of charge of length L, having linear charge density lambda, having linear charge density lambda, is entering. is uh, start centering at t is equal to 0 start centering the cube at t is equal to 0 and most with the constant speed v and most with the constant speed v then draw the variation of flux through the cube then draw the variation of flux through the cube with the time When L is, write the three conditions here. When L is less than A, L is equal to A, and L is greater than A. So under those three conditions, we need to draw the variation of the graph. So let us take this first one here. Set so T is equal to zero. Suppose it is entering, it starts entering here, right? So then after some time, if I consider here, now already some length will enter here. So this length we can write as how much length it is there inside me. Suppose I am taking it as some x length already entered this. At time t is equal to 0 I am starting now. So that means we can write it as at any time at any time t so we can write it as uh, length of wire inside cube is equal to x is equal to I can write it as v into t because it is moving with the constant speed so therefore this is a charge inside q in means I will write here therefore charge inside the cube so q in is equal to we can write it as lambda into x and so therefore it is q in is equal to lambda into v into t and now from this here we need to answer this maximum possible length also that means the maximum possible flux also we can write and from this let us write flux at any instant also so that means flux we can write that this is an net flux through the cube 1 by epsilon naught times q in therefore this net flux will be equal to lambda into v into t by epsilon naught right let's suppose this is equation 1 so that is a flux at any instant of time that's a general expression irrespective of these conditions right whether it is l may be greater than a less than a or equal to a irrespective of that we can write at any instant uh, we can write in that expression there at any instant of time now we need to consider these expressions here. Now if suppose if I consider like uh, if L is greater than A, so then what will happen? If L is greater than, sorry, L is less than A, or that is our first condition. So the first given condition is L is less than A. So when L is less than A, what will happen is at some instant of time, the total rod will completely enter into this that means I am representing here just I am taking this cube as a face one face one square here so when it is completely entering here right now this L length is there inside only so L length is there inside only so that means now the charge enclosed charge present in this uh, cube in this case will be Q into that means lambda into this value is nothing but L you can write right 
and now that that charge will remains constant until this instant here so after certain time then you will get this this instant here so from this instant to this instant the charge enclosed will be equal to maximum and that maximum charge will be equal to lambda l right so for that period the charge inside the cube will remains constant when it is uh, just it is leaving this uh, this space and uh, till it touches the opposite face during the time interval during the time interval charge inside the cube will remain same when l is less than a and that will be equal to lambda l and so that for that period of time the flux passing through the cube will remain constant so i can represent this variation as this flux versus time is equal to initially it is directly proportional to t you will get and so the flux goes on increasing here right and it reaches certain maximum value and it remains constant for for certain interval of time then it decreases now this maximum value is nothing but you will get lambda l by epsilon not you will get so that is our maximum value here this is our maximum flux so i am writing here phi maximum so which is lambda l by epsilon not got it so that means it is initially increasing it will remain constant for certain time interval which is lambda l by uh, epsilon not when it starts coming out here then automatically flux goes on decreasing and so that flux goes on decreasing and when it completely comes out of this cube then flux becomes zero so that is uh, one uh, first case here and so now similarly you can write in the remaining two cases what will be the difference you can identify here by identifying the difference you can write that uh, value so now if i cancel the second case so the only difference is so when it is when the rod is completely entering into that uh, cube complete length is there inside it will be only takes place at a particular instant of time only so i will draw this so i will rub this diagram now so simply let us take such a diagram then you can understand it easily so now i am taking the second case now when l is equal to a so initially it will remain same only initially this expression will be valid only now at the instant maximum value i am discussing here so when this rod is completely inside like this so this total length will be there inside right so which is exactly equal to the side of this cube here right and so now this will takes place only at a particular instant of time only so in this case the q maximum will be equal to maximum charge enclosure will be equal to lambda l you can write or which is nothing but lambda a you can write because lambda is equal, l is equal to a right and the, here the difference is this amount of maximum charge will remains only at a particular instant of time only later that means just before this instant the length of the rod will be like this just before this instant i am taking here and just after this instant the length of the rod will be like this some amount of length it will comes out here right so at a particular instant of time only this situation will be there and so that you will get this maximum flux only at a particular instant this part of the graph won't be there it increases and then immediately starts decreasing so that will be our situations there and so then i can draw this graph as first increasing and then decreasing and so now here this maximum flux will be equal to this phi maximum is equal to lambda a by epsilon not we can write because q maximum is lambda a we can write so that is the case in this case here when it is uh, completely inside this so then you will get the maximum right and so next let us take the third case also so initially why we are drawing the straight line passing through horizon means this graph this phi is directly proportional to t here so directly proportional means we will get a straight line passing through the horizon while entering that is and so now let us take this third case here so this third case is nothing but if l is greater than this a when l value is greater than a so when l value is greater than a then i can represent uh, the situation like this 
so at the instant of time when it's uh, when the rod touches this end i am writing here so l value is greater than a i am taking so this is the instant so rod is moving like this at a particular instant of time this rod will touches this opposite face so then the charge enclosure will be equal to this q maximum will be equal to lambda into l right now again this amount of charge will remains inside this for a particular uh, time that means remains constant for a particular time why it remains constant means the charge will remains constant until this end of this wire reaches this uh, face here that means until this part will take place until this rod will come like this so this q maximum is lambda a here a is the side got it so this this charge whatever the charge here that remains same so that uh, lambda a and this also lambda a so for this entire period of time from this instant to this instant is it clear initially this front face, front end of the rod is touching this face here from that instant to until the back end of the rod is uh, touching this face here between those two instants the charge inside this cube will be lambda into a only you will get because this total length is occupied by some some part of the rod here and so that in this case again the flux reaches to certain maximum value and then it remains constant for certain interval of time so similar to that graph you will get but lambda maximum value will be different lambda maximum will be lambda sorry uh, phi maximum will be lambda a by epsilon not we need to write here and here maximum flux are uh, same but the shape will be different these two are shapes are similar but the maximum flux values will be different there so that is a different the possibilities there in such a case so that means in from all these you can simply understand that we need to identify whenever you are writing the flux passing through given surface or what is the flux associated with the given uh, surface just we need to identify that how much charge is enclosed so we need to identify just how much charge is enclosed within inside this given surface so from that you can, you can easily write the what is the flux passing through that i will give you another example for this this is a line of charge for example it is placed near a sphere this is spherical surface or let it be imaginary spherical surface of radius r which is placed at a distance of d from this so we need to answer the flux passing through this uh, imaginary spherical surface when d is greater than or and when d is less than or so like that we need to answer that right so write that as an expression a linear a wire of linear charge density lambda a wire of linear charge density lambda is placed is placed near an imaginary spherical surface of radius r at a distance d from the center at a distance d from the center of the sphere from the center of the sphere find flux passing through the spherical surface when d is greater than or and when d is less than or so the first case i am taking here when d is greater than so when d is greater than or the given diagram is itself is clear so then what is the charge enclosed by the sphere 
So no charge is enclosed here because the total line we can write this flux passing through that surface is zero. So right, got it? Flux passing through that surface is zero because total charge is outside only, so no flux is passing through that. And so now let us take this second exam, second case. When D is less than R, D is less than R means our situation will be like this. So then here uh, this is our D now and this distance will be R. And so now this is suppose I am taking this as X from here to here. And so then this also automatically this will also be X only. Right? And so that X value, this is a line of charge here. Now in this we can clearly say that some charge is enclosed here. Some charge is enclosed here. Therefore in the second case we can calculate that charge enclosed is equal to lambda into 2X we can write. Because 2X is the total length inside we are taking here. So therefore it will be equal to lambda into 2 into that X value we can write simply by using this uh, triangle here Pythagoras theorem. So which we can write it as uh, under root of R square minus D square, right? And therefore this flux passing through that will be equal to 2 lambda into under root of R square minus D square by epsilon naught. So this is the flux passing through that uh, sphere, spherical surface. So in the previous uh, uh, recent IIT question is there, I think in 2018 or 17 question, I am not sure. So just they give certain angle here. This angle, total angle is given, 120 degrees. So if that 120 degrees is given, from that you can calculate, just we need to calculate this length of this wire here. So length of the wire we need to calculate. And so then from that we can calculate this length of the wire here. For example, if this total angle is 120 degrees is given. So I can divide this 60 degrees and 60 degrees here. So then this will be 30 or you can say this is R means this side will be R uh, sin 30 you can write. Sorry, sin 60 if this angle is 60 degrees. So that means total length will be 2R sin 60 you will get. And then uh, 2R sin 60 into lambda by epsilon naught. That will be the flux passing through that surface there. So like that we can answer such a type of questions there. And in this only, in this example only now suppose. So write it as an next continuation of this. Now for example, let us take directly this question. If it is not a line of, uh, it is not a line of uh, charge for example, it is an infinite non-conducting plane of the charge. So now let us, how to write the flux passing through that. I will write it as an X problem there. That means this is a line of charge. Now instead of this line of charge, I am placing it in a plane of charge. Suppose I am taking this infinite plane of charge is uh, placed like this. Assume it to be passing through the sphere like this. having some surface charge density sigma. So for example, this side I am giving here, this is placed at a distance of R by 2 from the center. So write that problem. An infinite non-conducting plane, an infinite non-conducting plane is passing through an infinite non-conducting plane having surface charge density sigma. Having surface charge density sigma on one side. Surface charge density sigma on one side is passing through an imaginary sphere of radius r. Is passing through an imaginary side, imaginary sphere of radius r at a distance r by 2 at a distance r by 2 from the center as shown in figure then find flux passing through the imaginary sphere then find flux passing through the imaginary sphere so just the same we need to calculate the q in 
So for that we need to calculate the, this is a two dimensional, that means planar surface, we need to calculate the area. And to calculate that area, suppose I am taking this as a radius here. So that side you can write it that as, that means this angle is 60 degrees, uh, 30 degrees you will get. Or you can write that just that R is equal to, I can write that as under root of R square minus R square by 4 by Pythagoras theorem. So that means root 3 by 2 or you will get this side. Now it is a plane here. It is a plane in the sense if you are placing that, then inside this sphere you will get a circular disk of radius r. Got it? It is not only it's a previously only this length we need to calculate because previous one is only line of charge. It is a two dimensional plane here. Two dimensional plane means here this part what we are drawing here in three dimensional that will be a cone actually you will get. This means this triangular part what I am drawing here that you will get in the form of a cone. Here this will be the base of the cone here. That means this will be a base of cone of radius smaller. Then the charge inside we can write as charge enclosure we can write as sigma into pi r square we can write here. So this is a charge enclosure here. So sigma into pi into r square is nothing but 3 by 4 into capital R square. Therefore, I can write this flux as uh, this net flux we can write as Q inside by epsilon naught. So, which we can write as uh, pi r square that means 3 pi r square into sigma by 4 epsilon naught we can write. So, that is a uh, flux passing through the surface. So, that is the difference there. The previous one is linear charge, linear charge density. So, we are taking only this length here. This is a two-dimensional plane of charge here. So, we need to take that area, that surface sigma into area of this uh, uh, plane inside this cone we need to write. That is nothing but in the form of a base of that cone you will get. So, pi r square we can write where r is given by this expression. So, that is a flux calculation here. So, we need to identify that we need to calculate the charge enclosure by the given surface whenever such a problems are given. So, if you, if you are able to calculate the charge enclosure by the surface, from that you can calculate the flux passing through that. So these are some basic problems based on that. In the next case, in the next uh, class, we will discuss some more problems based on these flux calculations there. And after that, we will go to the uh, some derivations. And then uh, we start some applications of this Gauss law there. Thank you.